Hi, this is Paul, and today I'm going to be talking about Freedom Planet. Freedom Planet is a side-scrolling action platformer reminiscent of games like Sonic, Gunstar Heroes, and Mega Man X4, just to name a few. It takes some of the best elements tested by time from all of these games and puts them all into a neat little package. The story presented is from the view of whichever character you choose from the start. I recommend starting with Lilac, the dragon, as you get the most out of the story, starting there and filling in the gaps with Carol, the wildcat, afterwards. The writing is enjoyable, and while they present a serious story of a world in an energy crisis, I always find myself smiling in the silly moments. The villain in the game also deserves a mention. Brevin is going to get the job done, by any means. He is determined to save his world at the cost of others. Brevin is competent, and the only thing stopping him from succeeding is the fact that he isn't the hero of the story. The gameplay and animations feel smooth and well thought out, and the nice little touches they do ranging from facial expressions to small animations like swinging around to catch a ladder are satisfying. Combat is a fairly constant part of the levels, but doesn't feel excessive or insufficient. The pacing is also fantastic, fast where it needs to be, and slow when it should be. I was riding the roller coaster of excitement throughout both my playthroughs with Lilac and Carol. Seriously, the game presents tons of moments of the chase. Another neat feature is that other characters you're not playing as come out and help during certain levels and certain boss fights. The last small touch is that everyone apparently has magnetic boots and the whole world is magnetic. That or spike shoes. If the wall is designed to be scaled, then you can walk or run right up it. Each level has multiple pathways, so on top of the entire having to play through multiple times to get the full story from both characters, there's plenty of replayability to be had. The characters each feel unique. Lilac is a high mobility character with a combat style revolving around her cyclone and dash attack, which you can use to ricochet to get to other parts of the map. It's also important to note that you're invulnerable during the animation of the dash attack, from the start of the spin to the end of its distance traveled. The only unfortunate thing about this ability is that it takes your entire special bar, which leaves you unable to do a cyclone until it's recharged enough. So while useful, use it intelligently. Carol, on the other hand, is more of a slower brawler character preferring to be in the mix. She has a short dash in the air to get her up to speed, but other than that, she's fairly slow on foot. Her special attack is a barrage of attacks in front of her. She's invulnerable during this time as well, as long as you're holding the button down and have enough special to keep it going. This is probably the biggest selling point for me between the two, since there's the ability to choose short moments of needed invulnerability versus one long moment. Throughout your playthrough as Lilac, you may have seen containers for gasoline. Remember these, because when Carol finds one, she gets to bust out a motorcycle. <laughs> this is no ordinary motorcycle. This is the most powerful, all-terrain vehicle in creation. If you manage to get your bike, you immediately become a high-mobility powerhouse with the ability to overcome obstacles that would kill Lilac if you messed up. It does eventually break if you take enough damage. Keep this thing alive at all costs. As highly as I praise this game, it's not without its faults. The AI in certain fights repeat really annoying attacks to deal with, and the damage of some enemies is really high, especially when you take into account the health of these enemies and the number they send at you. I'm looking at you, Dreadnought Guards. The difficulty scaling in the game also takes an exponential curve once you get to the very last level. It does not prepare you for this. I burn more lives on the final boss for my Lilac playthrough on that fight alone than I did for everything prior to it and life spent on my Carol playthrough. The only saving grace for this section is at checkpoints after each stage. Run around and waiting for my invulnerable to be off cooldown to counter Brevin's more frequent powerful attack is not my idea of fun. All of this aside, Freedom Planet is a fantastic piece of work and I'm glad that it was kickstarted. You can feel the love that was put into the game and how much respect they had for the games that inspired them to make this wonderful piece. A good story, great art and animation, amazing music and fun, captivating gameplay. I hope more games like Freedom Planet are made. I'm going to give Freedom Planet an 8.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Please like, favorite, and subscribe.